My name is Blake Rogers. I'm assistant manager here at East West Studios in Hollywood. Well, the building itself is about 100 years old. It started off as part of the Columbia Film Pictures lot, where they used to shoot uh, silent films here. Um, it became, in the 1920s, a grocery market here in Hollywood called Cassius King. And um, after that, it was a wartime casino during World War II, where they did uh, burlesque shows and uh, gambling. And uh, then at the beginning of the 1960s, it became a recording studio. Bill Putnam is a famous audio engineer from Chicago. He came out here um, and uh, with the request from Frank Sinatra, he was Frank Sinatra's personal engineer. And uh, he started these studios here at 6000 Sunset. And uh, Frank Sinatra had just left his contract with Capitol and started his own label here. And uh, here in this building, in Studio One, he recorded That's Life, My Way, The Ladies of Tramp, New York, New York, and uh, also that duet with his daughter, Nancy Sinatra, Something Stupid. And uh, besides Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley did his 1968 comeback special here. Barbara Streisand did The Way We Were here. Um, the Mamas and the Papas did California Dreaming here. Monday, Monday, the Beach Boys did all of their iconic work here, including all of Pet Sounds, Surfing USA, and uh, so many hits um, and television theme songs throughout the 60s and the 70s. Uh, theme songs for TV shows like The Monkees, The Partridge Family, MASH, Hawaii Five-0, The Beverly Hillbillies, The Munsters, The Addams Family, uh, the list goes on and on. It's matured in, in that the rooms themselves have stayed the same. Um, but throughout the, the years, uh, the rest of the facility has gone through a few facelifts and different changes. But uh, other than the modern stuff in the lobby and uh, in the artist lounges here, the actual rooms themselves have been kept uh, historic uh, since the 60s. Um, and that's important to keep the same uh, famous sound that the rooms have. The live room is like an instrument in a lot of ways. You know, you, you can do a lot of things in your home, you can do a lot of things in your garage, but you can't get a fantastic percussion sound in your garage or at home. And uh, you also don't get the same uh, access to the same gear, the same microphones, and uh, there's not, there lacks our energy when someone's in a home. You know, when you're in a recording studio, there's an energy that the artist and the producer and the engineers, they play off each other, and they're working all together. And when you come to a common space, um, the best work comes out of it. Well, live rooms are the sound that you are hearing. You know, only half, only half of it of what you're hearing is, is what's actually being played. It's also how what's being played uh, bounces off in the room and how it's recorded. And so it's a, an integral part of it. And, uh, you know, large rooms, they create a sound that's booming, that's larger than live. Small rooms sound exactly the way you want it to play, you know. So it's a, there's so many different possibilities and uh, so many different options and uh, really, you know, you're never, never going to get a, around, you know, getting a good drum sound because, you know, you can sample it, you can play it again, but, you know, playing it live in the room, that's the sound you want to get and that's the sound you do get when you play in a live room, you know. About five years ago, the space was completely redesigned by Philippe Stark all the lobby areas, the artist lounges and everything like that. Um, he's a designer that designs uh, mainly hotels and restaurants across the world. Uh, for this project, his only recording studio project, he really wanted to take an historic space and take the sort of creature comforts like the lounges and the lobby and create a space in which uh, like rock stars would be comfortable in, you know? Because you ask rock stars, they, they sleep in the best hotels, they eat at the best restaurants, how can you send them into like, you know, a dark, dirty recording studio and get them to do their best work? They have to feel inspired. They have to feel uh, like they're in a happening place. And, uh, and that, you know, the design here, uh, it's, it's no one genre and it's no one era. Philippe Stark wanted all the different genres and all the different eras to be a part of it because that's what we do here. We do rap, we do hip hop, we do rock, we do or orchestras, we do, uh, everything from a single singer up to 90-piece orchestras. So that's the kind of space that it is already to begin with, and uh, Philippe Stark just helped establish that for a new generation. It's hard to get away from a space like this, to be honest. It's such a historic space. There's so many possibilities. Uh, certainly there are challenges, but, you know, one day you could have, you know, uh, 
Michael Bublé in Studio One, you could have Metallica in Studio Two, and you could have the Red Hot Chili Peppers in Studio Three, and that's an experience you can't get anywhere else. You have all these different stars meeting, mingling, they're talking to each other, they're planning different projects, they're switching musicians on each other, sometimes they go and play on each other's records, you know? That's not what you're gonna get in your house. And uh, certainly, that's, you can only get an experience here at a recording studio like East West.